this part's not in your book, so don't worry about that part. So why is this? What is my y intercept? Zero, yeah, because it doesn't pass through anything, right? So if my starting point would be at zero, right? And then what is my slope? One. One. So that means to do what? Up one, over one, up one, over one. Okay? This is called the parent function of our line. Okay, it's where it goes through zero, zero, and it just goes up one over one. Okay, if I ha if I change this to y equals x plus four, where's my starting point? Four. Four. So one, two, three, four. And then what do I still do? Up one, up one over one, up one. So this, what, what did it do based off of my parent function? It just moved up how many? Four. Four. Moved up this guy right here. Okay? So today, we're going to talk about that with absolute value. Okay? If you remember, if I have the absolute value of 5, I get 5. Okay? If I have the absolute value of negative 5, I get 5. Okay? Absolute value is a distance, remember, away from 0 on the number line. So those lines are always going to make what's inside it positive. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Kind of, sort of? Right, sort of. Okay, so if I have <clears throat> no, I'm only that. Okay, but this is what my absolute value parent function is going to look like. It's going to look like a B like this. It's going to go up from zero to zero. Okay, and both of my lines on both sides are going to go up one over one. So if you notice from here, it goes up one over one, up one over one, and then on this side it goes up one over one. Up one over one. Make sense? So far, so good, right? What do you want to flip over? Mm -hmm. All right. So we talked a little bit about the parent function. Okay. When we slide it up and down, or if we move the vertex, we call that a translation. Okay. So when we did it with our line, so our parent function looked like that, right? And then when I moved it up over, that's called a translation. Okay, we're just moving. Okay, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about graphing that absolute value and then translating it and how we're going to translate it. Okay? So, f of x is a fancy way of writing what? It's kind of a little review. Fancy way of writing y. Yeah. So this is just y equals the absolute value of x. Okay? So if I make a t-shirt, okay, and I use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 to graph this guy. Okay, this is page 19. 19. I'm looking for page on you guys, sorry. Okay? So if I plug in negative 2 in here for x, okay, so we're taking the absolute value of negative 2 and getting 2. Okay, and then we're taking the absolute value of negative 1 and getting 1. Absolute value of 0? <coughs> 0. Absolute value of 1? And absolute value of 2? Two. 2. All right, so we've got negative 2. 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. I'm just going to make a V. Okay. 
This is the parent function of our absolute value. Okay? It goes through, what's my vertex? Huh? Zero, zero, zero. Yep. So my vertex is going to be the point zero, comma, zero. Okay? And then if you notice, on each side, it goes up one over one, up one over one. Okay? And on the left side, it does the same thing. Up one to the left one, up one to the left one. Okay? Good to go? So far, so good? Alright, this guy right here is going to move it up or down. Okay, in this case, yeah, since it's minus, it's going to be down. Okay, so we're going to start from zero, zero, right? And we're going to go where? Down to negative four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so what's my vertex? Negative four. Uh, it's got to be a point, though. There you go, zero, negative four. Okay, so anytime we ask for a vertex, I know that when we were doing what? Well, when we were doing lines, we could just go with one number. Okay, but now since it's going to be an absolute value function, and in a couple chapters here, we spend a lot, a lot of time doing quadratics, so we're going to talk a lot about vertices then too. Okay, so now since there's nothing in front of here, my slope is one. So same thing that we did, up one over one on the right side, up one over one on the right side, and then the same thing on the left side, up one to the left, up one to the left, make your V. So this guy, what do you suppose is going to happen? I'm going to start up at 2, so my vertex is 0, positive 2, yep. Okay, and then how am I going to make the rest of my graph? Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, on both sides, make your beat. Okay, not too bad, right? So far, so good? Alright, now, we're going with what's inside here. Okay, now we have to be a little bit careful because it's messed up. Now it's always going to be the opposite of what it is. Okay, so if it's a minus 2, we're actually going to move it to the right. Okay, everybody on the same number as me right now? What page are we on? Still 19? 20? Third, third one down? Okay, so since this is a negative, we're going to move it to the right. So we're going to go from 0, move it to the right, 2. Okay, so now what's my vertex? 2, comma, because there's nothing, there's not a plus anything out here, right? Okay, so that's where we get our going to get the zero from. And then since there's nothing in front of my absolute value, I do what? Up one over one. Both sides. And now I have a V. This time it was translated, okay, if we use that word translated, it was translated to the right. Okay, if this is a plus sign in here, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to go to the left, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go to the left, how many? Three. So one, two, three. And since it's not plus anything out here, my vertex is... Questions so far? Alright. Then, 
let's jump to this guy. I know there was about a bazillion examples in here. So now we're the third one down on page 21. Okay, so this tells us to move it which way? It tells us to move it to the right too. And this tells us to move it up one. So our vertex is two comma Okay, because so there's nothing out in front. Up one over one. Up both. That's what, right? Okay, went over two, went to the right two, and went up one. Okay, biggest thing is that it's always the opposite of what's inside it. Okay, if that's going to be a minus, we're going to the right. If it's going to be a plus, we're going to the left. So it's kind of opposite of what we're used to, right? So this guy, just looking at it, what's my vertex going to be? Yeah, so that's got to change to a negative because it's opposite of what's inside. And then since that's a plus 3, it's going to be a positive 3. So we're going to the left two, up three, and then from that spot, up one over one. And then we need our beat. Okay, so take a look at 22. Page 22, top of page 22. Okay, this guy tells us that my vertex is positive 4, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Alright, this is where we have to be careful. What's out in front of here? A negative. So instead of going up 1 over 1, we're going to go yeah, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Down one over one, down one over one, and so now we're going to have an upside down V this time. Okay, so if I'm looking at this guy, my vertex is negative five, two, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then what's out in front? A negative, so I'm going to go down one over one. And now I have an upside down piece. 